Hello and welcome. In here, we are going to look at an integration of a product of exponential function and a trigonometric function. When we have a product of two different functions in an integral, one of the most common technique that can be used to solve this integration is usually integration by parts. And without wasting time, let us begin. First, we need to recall that the formula for integration by parts is given as follows. The first step that we need to do over here is to always figure out which part of the function will be taken as u and which part of the function will be taken as the dv dx. Now in our current function here, it doesn't really matter whether we take the exponential function as a u or we take the exponential function as a dv dx. But for the purpose of our example over here, we let our u equals to e to the power of ax, whereas dv dx equals to sine kx. To start, we begin by differentiating the u respect to x so that we will get du dx equals to a e to the power of ax. On the other hand, for the dv dx, we are going to integrate both sides with respect to x so that we will get v equals to negative 1 over k cos kx. With all this information in hand, we can therefore apply integration by parts onto our function i so that u times v, which means that it will give us e to the power ax multiplied by v, which is negative 1 over k cos kx. And then we need to minus integration of v du dx. So our v here is negative 1 over k cos kx multiplied by du dx, which we have found that is a e to the power of ax. And then this entire thing needs to be integrated with respect to x. Now, if we were to simplify the equation, we will get negative 1 over k e power ax cos kx minus negative a over k multiplied by integration of e to the power ax cos kx. Now over here, you can see that I factor out the constants outside since the constant will not affect the integration. So now we can see that we are getting another integration of a product of an exponential function with another trigonometric function. So maybe we can do another round of integration by parts onto this integration again. So to solve for this, we again have to decide which part of the function is u and which part of the function is dv dx. So in this case, we can probably do a similar thing as what we have done before this, where we let our u equals to the exponential function and our dv dx equals to the trigonometric function here. Then we proceed to do the exact same procedure so that we will get du dx is just a e to the power ax. And then on the other hand, we are going to integrate dv dx with respect to x, which will give our v equals to 1 over k sine kx. So again, using all of this information, we can see that integration of e to the power ax cos kx will just give us u times v. So where u here is e to the power ax multiplied by v, which is 1 over k sine kx. That will minus integration of v du dx. We have found that v is 1 over k sine kx multiplied by du dx, which is a e to the power ax. Again, if we simplify everything, we will get 1 over k e power ax sine kx minus. Over here, I'm going to factor out the constant again outside of the integral, then that will multiply by integration of e to the power ax sine kx. Now, what we can do is we can substitute the entire expression for the integration of e to the power ax cos kx back into the original function here, so that we will get our i will equal to this following function. Now, you can see the problem with our expression over here. After doing integration by parts twice, we are still getting an integration of a product of exponential function and a trigonometric function. And it certainly seems like that if I were to continue to do integration by parts onto this integration, we will continuously getting similar integrals over and over again. Fortunately, and this is where it gets very interesting, if you are observant, you will see that integration of e to the ax sine kx is essentially the function i. Our i over here 
is equal to the integration of e power ax sine kx with respect to x. Over here, we also get an integration of e power ax sine kx with respect to x, which means that we can rewrite this function here as i, which will give us i equals to the first two terms that we have gotten before and minus a squared over k squared multiplied by i. Now, if we move the term with i to the left side, we will get our original i plus a over k squared i. And that should give us back the first two terms that we have gotten before. Now, if we factor out the i, we will get 1 plus a squared over k squared multiplied by i equals to the function here. Now, if we recall, our objective here is to find the expression of i. Therefore, we can move this particular factor to the right side so that we will get k squared over a squared plus k squared multiplied by the entire function on the right. Now, in case any of you do not know where this term comes from, what I have done here is I have moved this into a single function first so that I will get something like this. And then after that, I proceed to divide this factor on both sides so that I can move this factor to the right hand side and therefore it gives us this. So finally, we can simplify everything and we will get this as our final answer. But of course, let's not forget that since we are doing indefinite integral, we need to add an integration constant on the right side. And this is how you do an integration of a product of trigonometric function and exponential function. And that is it.